just resetting charts here. Nice. All right. Good morning. Como tal vous? Hey, it's uh, 6.36 on Wall Street, about three hours before the open of trading on the street. Welcome to Quantbox Live, where we get our global macro on and uncover the best fundamental trading opportunities. Then we go to our charts. Yeah. So anywho, boo, boo, ba doo, ba doo, ba doo. Global macro trend analysis. Then we drill into the fundamentals. We have a smart money tracker. We look at central bank forecasts. We do real-time market sentiment. Actually, with two different gauges, this and the uh, scatter plot. Oh, my goodness. So why is this even important? It's what's What is the raison d'etre? Well, we went five weeks without an underlying interest trend. And so Quantbox would have saved you a lot of pain and suffering and probably losses. The second thing is now that the trend has shown up, well, now you have the ability to let your winners run. So you stay small when you should be small, then you're big when you should be big. And that, my friend, is worth 79 bucks any day of the week. So anywho, let's, uh, let's get going. But if you're on YouTube watching a recording of this, Swing, swing by uh, quantbox.co. Try, take the trial. Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not, you know, uh, wait, I was thinking about two different things. <laughs> Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus in the long term, and never risk money. Cannot afford to lose. See, I can't do two things at once. Anywho, so welcome to the dashboard. I've been getting a lot of uh, text messages from Quantbox. What was the last one? Uh, 4.56 this morning. Looking at my cell phone because Quantbox talked to me. New alert. USD Swiss franc went from 9 to a 10, which is bullish. And it had to do with the technical analysis. Oh, well, thank you very much for that, Quantbox. So that was uh, a while ago. Also, it also uh, provides uh, a morning update via email. And I guess I have that somewhere. A little morning report. What time did that show up? Uh, oh. Hang on. Mm -hmm. Looking at my phone again. See, in this case, it saves you the trouble to even log in. Yeah, so at 5.58 a.m., I got an email. Uh, and then there was one right before London opened. So this is right before New York opened. And uh, it gave a little summary. NASDAQ is a 4 to a 5. And um, Kiwi CAD looks like it's gone from a negative four to a negative five japanese stock market's gone from a negative four to a negative five pound aussie went from a negative four to a negative five. Oh, nice little update isn't that cool now the funny thing is the way it's designed it's ai watching ai <laughs> and a little brother watching big brother um but nonetheless it's nice to be able to get all that in your phone and that's what is here a dollar a day, basically, right? Yeah, very cool. So anyways, let's log into the pro. Logging into the pro. And good morning. It's nice to see you here. It's early for many people. Okay, yields are still going up. But, you know, it, we've been about 4.65 for, I don't know, two days now. So maybe a little bit of stabilization. I don't know. But uh, Jay Powell spoke um, at a Bank of Canada conference yesterday and basically said the Fed's not going to cut three times this year. I don't know if he caught that, um, but <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and so he was just, what was it, at the Fed meeting about what was it four weeks ago reaffirming the three and now he's like mm, i don't know 
maybe one. Uh, so anyways, uh, uh, yields are going to jump around a little bit. They didn't move much here. Excuse me. But the uh, yield on the uh, two-year uh, went above 5.0 and then uh, I think is now 4.95. But uh, so anyways, so the, the market is moving. Uh, oil still falling. Okay. Gold still rising. S&P 500 stabilizing around 5K. Now, remember how high that was. Was it 52 or 54? We had that as support. So that's kind of interesting. We'll take a look at that. and We'll look at how the markets are performing going into the New York Open. And that's the scatter plot here. Uh, Euro dollar stabilizing around 106. Hey, man, it was 109 last week. Okay, and it was 109 the week before, and it was 109 the week before, and it was 109 the week before. That's why these risk gauges are so important because they'll confirm that whatever movement you're observing really truly has a multi asset correlated trend. Okay, in Bitcoin, 63. Well, I think it was 62 yesterday, right? USD Rand, very bullish. USD CAD, very bullish. USD Yen, very bullish. USD Swiss Franc, very bullish. Okay, USD, uh, sorry, Kiwi USD, very bearish. Pound dollar, very bearish. Aussie dollar, very bearish. Euro dollar, very bearish. I don't know. What do you think? Is the dollar strong? Yeah, for sure. And weekly has gone from negative four strong um, risk off. I need to update this so it's wider. Uh, right? Strong risk off, negative four it was yesterday, if my memory serves me correctly. And now it's even more risk off. Okay. V uh, VIX is up significantly week over week. S&P 500 is down significantly week over week. Dollar is strong week over week. Gold is up significantly week over week. Yields are up significantly week over week. And yen flat. I mean, like, it's very bearish. This is very risk off. And notice that the importance of this is we're not looking at one asset class and saying, well, I guess that means stock market's down. I guess that means the dollar should be strong. No, we're looking at six different things in the correlation of them that would normally lead to dollar strength. Seeing them combined just shows you it's real. And typically, typically, typically you buy dollar, you buy yen, you buy Swiss franc, which means Aussie, Swissy short, Aussie dollar short, Euro dollar short. Okay. CAD dollar short, all that kind of stuff, which is a completely different gauge to what we just saw on the home uh, on the uh, dashboard. Okay, these are different assumptions. So dollar dollar uh, CAD up. Okay, and then the the other pairs um, like Aussie, if I can scroll down, <clears throat> pound dollar down, Aussie dollar down, Euro dollar down. You're like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that on the on the risk gauges. Well, yeah, but these are not measuring any any data on the risk gauge page. This gets to the conclusion based on the commitment of traders report, retail sentiment positioning, seasonality, the technical trend, GDP, inflation, labor interest rate differentials between these two asset classes, between these two assets, between these two assets, between these two assets. So it's macroeconomic data and comparative analysis, which has nothing to do <clears throat> with the risk gauge. Combine them together, they say the same thing. How do you feel about that? Bring some legitimacy to your potential setups. And now you can go to your chart, for example, and see if you have, you know, uh, uh, a technical opportunity. So that's amazing as they line up. Bitcoin doing very well overnight. 
it had what two three days of down 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 we hit a psychological number kind of we got pretty close to 60 but there was a technical level of support and it bounced okay i have it on my chart so that's interesting so a big bounce but let's get rid of that because that's up two percent we'll get rid of the crypto and then what what do we see here well you could probably eyeball it okay it looks kind of like this if you were to create all the averages what does that mean down that's a negative slope. Okay. Everything up here is bullish, but out of position. Okay. Everything down here is bearish, but out of position. And this stuff is doing okay. Okay. This stuff's okay. But uh, oil's down. Mm. Okay. So you're like, okay, well, oops, oil's down but it still has a strong bullish score of seven. Okay, so maybe at some point in the near future, you end up buying it using technical analysis to say, well, it's down and it's been down for a couple of days. Now, th this, uh, this scatter plot is very sensitive. It, it looks... It's a matter of hours, not days. So it doesn't really like, quote unquote, remember that it was down yesterday. That's just me babbling. But today, like right now, it is down. But Quantbox is scoring it as something that should be up here somewhere. And if you're a bull, if you go along with the Quantbox analysis of a seven, then this is a dip. And so maybe today you buy a dip. Maybe it sets up tomorrow. Maybe it's the next day. The thing is, fundamentally, Quantbox thinks it's bullish. And so now you watch it on your charts looking for um, a reversal to the upside. And then you take it. Okay. So maybe this drop, oil drops to 80 and you buy at 80. And then in two weeks, we're at 90 again, right? You see? So anyways, there's a lot of, uh, this is definitely sort of risk off, unexpected kind of stuff. What is working? Well, copper's working. Well, two days ago, I spent a half an hour discussing copper. So watch, what was that, Monday's video? Yeah, watch Monday's video. I talk about copper. NASDAQ's up. Okay, S and P five hundred slightly negative. Okay, Dow slightly positive. So we have some slightly positiveness. Uh, let, let's get rid of the currencies. Just look look, look at the commodities and the stock indices. And uh, yeah, it's a bit of a scatter, isn't it? So when we look at the indices, it looks like, okay, we got a bunch of things over here and a bunch of things over here. Now that's as expected. That's that's okay. Okay. Japanese stock market's down. Quantbox expects that. The Russell 2000 is down. Quantbox expects that. Okay. Oh, look at that. Gold is a negative two now. That's interesting. Footsie's up, but Quantbox doesn't expect it. So that's interesting. Maybe this ends up being a short. Oil's down, platinum's down, and Quantbox thinks these should be up. The, you know, it looks like S&P 500 is falling and becoming more and more neutral. It's only a two. Cool. So there's some... This there this is like modestly okay, <laughs> but it seems like overwhelming right now. Uh, many things are um, we'll just call it risk off. Okay, I mean, hmm, I mean, uh, it's, it's going to be an interesting day. It's somewhere between risk off and neutral. Maybe it's kind of in the middle of a seesaw. Okay, so I look at this and I'd say, be careful. 
Be careful. That's all. Be careful. Don't be aggressive at the open. Um, like I wonder if some of these things like the stock market will have an up day. And the challenge, I think, for you as a trader and investor today is if the stock market rallies, let's say, let's say the stock indices today go up uh, almost 1%. It's a pretty good day. It's not a crazy day, but it's a pretty good day after three or four bad days, okay? Do you sell it? Do you sell the rip? I would think about it logically now. Let's see what's on the calendar, see if we're going to get some vol. Okay. So this is sort of a mixed one, it, you know, um, we'll, we'll see how this starts impacting the pound, because I think the narrative is going is shifting from the UK economy is disastrous to comparing Great Britain to Europe. And this idea like the ECB cuts in June, but uh, the UK doesn't cut at all. And you get this money ma magnet effect where, yeah, everything is bad in the UK, but they pay higher interest rates. <laughs> so you, you, money moves there to collect, a, you know, a, you know, collect an extra quarter point or something like that, right? Lucas says, a lot of the assets are monthly targets. Yeah, hesitation should be expected. Yeah, um, point well made. Absolutely correct. And we're, we're seeing that hesitation in the scatter plot, right? Little bit of profit taking and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely correct. Right. Tonight we have Aussie Jobs Report. That's usually a good scalp opportunity which means you can get volatility for a couple of hours. But in my experience, you take, you take any profit you make in those two hours and you put it in your pocket. Now, maybe things have changed over the years, but that is my life experience of, I tried it for a lot, many years where I'd, I'd make a hundred pips on this news event, this particular news event, and I, I'd go to bed feeling all happy about my, you know, position. And I wake up in the morning and I got knocked out at break even. Now, when you do that multiple times, it, bur <laughs> it burns a hole in your brain, right? And you're like, I'll never do that again. I don't know. So I don't really know if it's true anymore, but it is my life experience. So, you, you know, you make 100 pips, you put it in your pocket, and then you go to bed. That's how I treat this one. But nonetheless, pretty good volatility. Um, but I want to make the point that, uh, of, um, you know, maybe the pound starts to strengthen out of the idea that the UK ne does not cut interest rates this year. But Europe does. The ECB does. And that will start impacting currencies. A lot of stuff going on next week. Next week should be quite interesting. Right, PCE that way out next week. GDP way out next week. Yeah. Okay, we don't need to do the COT. We don't need to do the central bank. Although, if, uh, if you play around with the Fed watch tool, there's a 50-50 chance of a Fed cut in September, and then the next one is like December. It's really shifted a lot in the last five weeks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where should we go? Maybe we should just go to the charts. 
So dollar strength. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do some charting. So you can see here, uh, do U.S. dollar quite strong again. That's risk off. That's bad. Okay, don't mix up dollar strength with good. No, it's bad. Okay, so anyways, that's risk off. Swiss, right? When the Swiss franc strengthens, that's also bad. Switzerland doesn't even like it. Okay, and that's another sign of risk off. Now, look how weak it got when the central bank essentially, you know, wanted it to be weak. Well, money is flowing to Switzerland. There's no doubt about it. Look at that giant spike versus the last six months. All of a sudden, out of the blue, shazam, we got some strength. Well, that matters. That's, that's investors around the world exiting their investments and moving their money to Switzerland. Well, that's a big deal. Let me back this out and try to put the same amount of time in there. And we've gone full circle now from dollar strength, dollar weakness, dollar strength again. Yen is just weak. What can, what can I say? That hasn't changed yet. That's odd. But as I mentioned, maybe on Sunday... Um, I believe the, the sort of the de facto, not official, but unofficial yen being a reserve currency, that status I think is gone now. It's dead. And you see it here, like money's not going, to, <laughs> money's not going to yen. CAD sideways on the long term, euro up on the long term. Aussie sideways on the long term. Pound doing okay. It's slow as molasses on a cold Georgia morning. But it's happening. And Kiwi's falling. Okay. So APAC, Asia Pacific, yen down, Kiwi down, Aussie down. Yeah. Interesting, huh? So now you have your winners and your losers. So. Wake up in the morning and sell the kiwi, right? So let's take a look at the dollar specifically. Now that our satellites are aligned. And what we've been looking at is sort of longer term stuff. What's happening now? Well, we had the downward move. And as Lucas uh, has pointed out, this is our projected low technically for the month of April for Euro dollar. We knew that from this point here and in particular there and then in particular after the news. Notice technically after you, the news, it moves sideways to the moving average. That's where you sell. Okay, down sideways to the moving average. That's where you sell. Down and based on this top, and the training you get at investorbootcamp.com to learn technical analysis. This is your exit. So really, day one, day two, day three after hitting exit, nothing has really happened. It hasn't fallen. Even when we moved, when price moved back to the moving average. Well, why didn't it move? Again, Lucas rightfully points this out. Well, traders have already made those trades. And in fact, if anything, they're taking some profit. Because we're looking at a macroeconomic trend, odds are some, some, somewhere in the future, and, and this would be in the next week, week and a half, uh, bears would re-enter this trade. But they're not doing it now. And when you look at your charts, it makes total sense. Okay? So I don't know what's going to happen today. Uh, but that one hour chart, we're, we're actually heading back up into the take profit zone. We're, we're breaking out to the upside. So that's not trend. And we saw that in the scatter plot. That's off trend. Okay, the trend you're going to decide either on this four hour or on the daily. 
And what I meant by re-entering this trade in a week, week and a half, the general idea would be something like this. Okay. Used to be resistance, used to be resistance, used to be support, used to be support, used to be support, now we're through support. Great. So what's what's the general plan? Okay. So we'll have a version of that, either a slow version or a fast version, right? We call that out of position. But that's that's what a trend would lead to. Okay, and we get to the bottom of that range. Okay, which is cool. That's like 105, 104, yeah, about 105. Well, hey, um, three, four weeks ago, we were up here, 109, and we sat there for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. Okay, so we're talking about a nice little 500 pip move, basically. And in here, there was no trend. And then here, game on. Okay, but that's that's really a strong versus strong. That's not even a good trade. Okay, you, like Aussie dollar, for example, we looked at more favorably. And so if we're going to do technical analysis, you you know, you want to kind of mark this. We definitely played off that price already. You want to mark this. These are, you know, old levels of support. You see? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Definitely played off of that. Why is that important? Well, if you're a bear, fundamentally. You use quant box, you looked at everything, you're like, I'm a bear. Go to your chart, here's a four hour, and you're like, okay, I want to be a bear. Bears sell at resistance. Where is resistance? What price is resistance? And you're like, well, it looks like some version of this. That's that's that would be it. That'd be right. Now the target, okay. If if the if we're gonna remain risk off for months, and I prepared you in the past. I don't know how far back. What three, four, five, six weeks ago? Even in January, I said at some point if it comes down or when. When we hit the early peak, okay, very often this happens closer to June. This ha this year it happened early, and I think it has to do with the election as well as the, the Fed cycle, right? But nonetheless, I said back in January when we hit the early peak, and there's tra traditionally a valley in the middle of, of the season, um, it could fall for months. So, like, if we're rolling over, if the stock market is going from bullish to bearish in April, this could, right, the stock market could fall until November. Maybe quickly, maybe slowly. Okay. Now, if that's true, then Aussie dollar could also remain bearish for six months. That's why when you use quant box, you stop thinking like a technical only trader. And you're like, oh, my God, I made 22 pips today on the Aussie dollar. You're like, really? This is going to fall every day practically for six months. And you're taking 20 pips out of the market. You're like, dude, seriously, set up a position. Be bigger. Be bolder. Let your winners run. Compound. Add more to it. Take a position. Okay, stop living off crumbs. So then you're like, so you can look at this and say, well, you, you're right. Now you're a bear again on this because it looks like it's made a lower low. So you take a lower high and the next lower high could be higher. 
You could have a scenario like this. It's just as valid. Okay. That, those are your technical entries. Your price. You start looking at price. You say, I'm a bear, so I'm going to look to sell high at resistance. What are the prices you're interested in as a boss? Maybe selling. But the bigger money maker, because that's just entry, whatever. You could do that and make 20 pips. Or you could do that and say, my target, okay, is uh, 61, maybe 60. Seems pretty reasonable, right? Not based on guess, not based on the round number, but just based on technical analysis of the annual market. Okay. These numbers were there in December and January for you to use directionally. I think we were talking about it back in January as your China play. Okay. Okay. Both up or down. You just have to, what is your play? <laughs> right? You're like, but I thought China was going to rally. Well, then you wouldn't be in any of these trades. Is this bullish? No. 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 Is this bullish? Maybe. Okay. Is this bullish? No. Is this bullish? No. Is this bullish? No. And, okay. So you had maybe one chance in the middle of last month. Okay. So sweet. It's been bearish otherwise. So are we heading down another 400 pips? Maybe 500 pips if it comes up closer to 65 and drop? Yeah, maybe. Okay, but that's how you want to use quant box. Think a think a little further than today, right? Plot on the map where you want to go. So imagine you made a commitment. Jim prints out this chart and puts it on a frame behind his desk, so he sees it every day, and he has a declared battle strategy. I'm taking down Aussie dollar. Uh, to uh, 60. And so therefore he has not just vision, but clarity. And the clarity is very important as a trader because you, you know what you intend to do before you've even done it. And you're filtering out all the other noise that just doesn't make any sense. So you, it's up today. You're like, cool, maybe I'll sell it. Maybe it's up this week. You're like, cool, maybe, maybe I'll sell it. Okay? So, for example, there's all kinds of ways to play it. Kick it off the 5, okay, which is approximately the 4-hour 21. That would be my first plan A. My next plan would be kick it off the future 21. You could even have one kick it off that annual pivot point. 65 and a half. Doesn't matter. I'm going to 60. So now I wait. I ambush. I set up ambushes in advance. Okay. When, if or when we get to this price, 64 and a half, I look to sell. If or when we get to 65, I look to sell. If we get to 65 and a half, I look to sell. These are my prices. Now it's an issue of time. So again, you're sitting up ambushes in advance and then sitting there waiting for the enemy to show up. That's what an ambush is. You're like, that's not fair. That's not fair. You, they took the high ground. They got crossfire positions. They booby trapped everything. That's not fair. Uh huh. All's fair in love and war. Yeah. Was it platoon? I think it's the scene in platoon where they're they're. He's only been there a few days, and they're going on a 
they're going on a hike and <laughs> they're going through the the uh the jungles of vietnam and the more experienced guy stops him and he's like stop and he's like why 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 well there's a pillbox or whatever where uh 10 feet in front of you <laughs> you're like what <laughs> yeah uh that's not fair i can't see it how do i fight this war when i can't see the enemy uh-huh so anyways uh, um you're supposed to be the one with the unfair advantage right and if you don't have it you don't want to fight so you pick your prices and you say well we're not going to go up here today we're not going to go up here today so how do you engage the enemy if you engage at all well i'll see you at 64 and a half we're at 64 and a quarter. Okay, well, I think a little higher would be most ideal. But somewhere between today and tomorrow, I probably want to get short. Maybe it's today. Maybe I don't quite get 65 and a half. Why? Well, the next issue when learning how to trade is realize you're trading inside the wicks. And there's training at Investor Bootcamp about this. And really, so for today, you're looking at this range, if I can get that out of the bay, right? You're looking at basically yesterday's candle. Please, MD4, please let me do this. It's not letting me grab it. Hang on. Let's see if I can get it. Okay. So we'll call that yesterday's range. It's snapping to some price, but anyways, we'll call that today's range. And the most ideal scenario for day trading, as you know, is to sell somewhere between, I'm going to guess, one-third, one-half, two-thirds? I'm eyeballing it. You can use your Fibonacci for that, so I'll, I'll double-check my accuracy. Yeah, pretty good, right? <clears throat> And so you're like, well, I'm modestly interested in today because remember this moving average that we want to kick off of is dynamic. It changes. Now, the actual price doesn't change that much, okay, because that's static. But you could say, well, I'll probably get short today or tomorrow because my plan A is sell off that, that daily 5 VMA, right? So you zoom in and you're like, okay, well, I know my price around 64 and a half, but it could be 64 and a quarter. I mean, we're 25 pips for something like this is a rounding error. So you're like, well, I prefer a little higher, but it might be today that I take the short. So now you get on something like a five minute chart or a 15 minute chart, depending on your personal preference. And you're looking and you're saying, I want to get short. 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 Okay. Is this bearish? No. So what's your plan for today? You're going to wait for this to turn bearish, and then you're going to short it with a 400 pip target. How do you feel about that? Is it bearish now? No. So, Wayne, tell me, how could it be bearish? When will it turn bearish? Well, today's trade plan would be, you know, having it be most ideal that it rolled over somewhere in that purple zone. We call that a day trade. Now I could put my daily pivots down there. It's all going to be roughly the same. It's a Fibonacci. It's an eyeball. It's not actually Fibonacci. I did one third, one half, two thirds. Use your Fibonacci. You get slightly different numbers. It doesn't matter anymore. I've already set up. I've already taken the high ground. I've already set up crossfire positions. I've already booby trapped everything. I'm sitting and waiting to engage. There's no strategy left. It's already done. So now I sit and I can do something like uh how about a 2155 cross what would need to happen to have this 21 kind of roll over and this 55 to roll over well you'd probably have to have some sort of price action up 
down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So somewhere in there, I would engage. I might do a 33, 333 OCO. Oops, OCO. <laughs> I can't think and talk at the same time. It's so funny. This is why I don't chew gum. Yeah. Uh, so anywho, so I'm sitting and I'm waiting. Is it going to happen at the New York Open? Yeah, probably. If it's going to happen, that would be about right. Or will it happen at the London Close? Will it happen at the New York Close? Will it happen at Asia Open? Will it happen on London Open? I don't know. I don't know when the enemy is going to show up. I just know what I'm going to do. And if I'm wrong, this will just keep going up for the next couple of days. And I'll just sit here uh, not losing money. Cool, right? So anyways, that's that's long. We did our, our normal um, looking at the uh, dashboard, we looked at the scatter plot, we looked at risk gauges, and we've concluded that fundamentally we are in a risk off mode, but technically we've hit targets and there could be a couple of days or even as much as a couple of weeks of hesitation in the risk off technical analysis. Okay, so we could have a couple of up days. Yeah, we could. And maybe you day trade those and you make a few pips up, 25 pips here, 50 pips there. But then we finally hit, right? Price comes to our ambush. And then what? We get trending again in the direction of the fundamentals. And now we're if we short, and we move our stop to break even, we're not interested in 25 pips profit. We're not interested in 50 pips profit. There's no reason to freak out because you have 100 pips profit. Oh my God, I have 100 pips profit. That's not part of the strategy. The strategy is stay with the underlying intrinsic trend. And it could be worth many, many hundreds of pips. So maybe along the way, you add. You're not short Aussie dollar once for 400. There might be three, four, five, ten Aussie dollar short trades over the next few weeks. Or we just sit here, wait, do nothing, and not lose money. Cool. Sounds interesting, right? All right. So thank you for being part of the Quant Box community. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Okay, remember, set things up fundamentally first, then go to your charts. I'm telling you, it'll radically change the way you trade. And probably for the better. <laughs> so I'll see you later. Cheers.